AI agents are a pretty logical thing to integrate into your business. They save you time and money and help you create great customer experiences. But what if we wanted to add logic to our agent? Logic lets us say, if this happens, then do this. We can also use variables to say, remember this value and reference it later in conversations. We can even do calculations with these values. So let's try using conditions and variables now. First up, let's try using conditions. We're gonna build a ferret insurance price calculator. We'll build a quote for the price of pet insurance for a ferret based on the answers that the user provides to our questions. The first thing that impacts the price of our insurance will be the ferret's name. Ferrets called Daniel cost an extra $100 to insure. Ferrets with a J in their name get a $10 discount. All other names have a $0 base price. So first we'll add a message block and we'll ask the user for the ferret's name. Then we'll use the capture step to listen for the user's answer. If you've not used the capture step before, click right here to learn how to use it. And we'll also add an entity for the ferret's name. So we'll say listen, capture, and we'll add an entity, create entity, we'll say ferret underscore name, and this data type will be name, create entity. We'll also only listen for the ferret's name by disabling listen for other triggers. Now we have our ferret's name, let's add our logic. We can do that using a condition step. So we'll drag this on and connect it up. Voiceflow supports two types of conditions, business logic and prompt-based logic. We'll use business logic for now, but we'll come back to prompt-based logic later. Let's add a path using the condition builder. So business logic, add condition builder. Advanced users can also use JavaScript expressions when building conditions. Click here to learn more. Okay, so our first rule is that ferrets called Daniel cost an extra $100 to insure. Now, we previously captured the ferret's name into this ferret underscore name variable. So we can say, if ferret name is Daniel, and then we'll add our other rule, and that is, if ferrets have a J in their name, they get a $10 discount. So we'll say, if ferret name, and this time rather than is, we'll say contains, and we'll say J. And just to be safe, let's handle both upper and lowercase j's. So we'll say match any, and we'll add, and we'll say if ferret name contains a capital J. That way, if any of these conditions are met, then this path will be triggered. There's also this else path, which we have enabled. This handles all scenarios that don't fall into either of these two. For example, if a ferret is named Jeff, it doesn't have a J in its name and it definitely isn't called Daniel. So it'll trigger this else path. So that's our logic. But how do we calculate the price of a ferret's insurance? Well, we can do that using variables. We've actually already used variables. When we listen for an entity, the user's response is saved into that variable named after the entity. In our case, it was the ferret underscore name variable. So let's add a price variable. We set variables manually using a set step. All right, so let's add that set step. It's just here. We'll drag it on. And we need to set the price variable, but we also need to make the price variable exist so we can set it. Let's do that now. So we'll say variable to set, value, and then we'll say create variable. We'll call it price, and the description will be the cost to insure a ferret. We can also set a default value to be safe. I'll set it to zero, but actually by default, variables are set to zero. And then we'll create our variable. Awesome. So now that variable exists, we can set it to 100 if the ferret is called Daniel. Then we'll go and connect this up here. Then we'll duplicate this block and we'll say, if the ferret's name contains a J, then it gets a discount, doesn't it? Get set to negative 10. Awesome. And since our default value is zero, we actually don't need to go and set something for else because it's already set to zero. So that's the business logic conditions. Now let's try out prompt conditions. Another thing that can impact the price of ferret insurance is the ferret's emotions. A happy ferret costs an extra $20 to insure, a sad ferret costs an additional 50, and an angry ferret costs a whopping $100 extra. Unfortunately, customers often lie about how happy their ferret is to get a discount. So rather than asking them directly, we'll get them to tell a story about their ferret. We'll then interpret the ferret's emotions from the story using the power of AI and set their price accordingly. So let's implement this logic into our agent now. 
First, we'll ask the user for a story with a message step. So we'll say talk, message, and then with the capture step, this time we'll go and capture our entire message. So let's say, tell us a story about your ferret. And we'll go and connect it to here, to here, and of course, to our else too. All right, perfect. And now we need to capture the user's reply. We can do this using a capture and we'll listen for entire user reply, which is saved to that last utterance variable. So now we've captured the user's reply into last utterance, we can include it in our prompt condition. Let's add that condition step now. We'll say logic condition, and then we'll connect it up. All right, now this time we're using prompt logic and we'll create a new prompt. The prompt is gonna be called ferret classifier. Now, we're gonna need a pretty big system prompt here to make this work, but don't worry, I'm not gonna make you write it, it's in the description just down there, so uh, go copy paste it. I'm gonna do that right now. And you can see here, our prompt has a couple things in the system prompt. First of all, it says it's a classification system, so our LLM understands what its job is. Secondly, we're really clear. We say a ferret can have one of three emotions, happy, sad, or angry. That way, it's not gonna come up with something totally crazy like it is feeling reflective. And finally, we say if there's not enough information, reply with info. We're actually not gonna trust our LLM to handle that properly. We're gonna account for if it replies completely out there with something else, but we are being explicit with saying only respond with happy or sad or angry or info. Hopefully it kind of listens to us. Then we're gonna say our user message is gonna be user story, and we're gonna go and get last utterance. Remember, this contains the message that the user just typed that we got with our capture step. So our prompt looks good to go to me. So let's go and close this out and let's add our paths just like we did earlier. So we'll say plus. And remember, we specified what should be returned. So if value is happy is one, if value is sad is another, and if value is angry is the third. We also said our LLM could respond with info, but just to be resilient, we'll use else again. So if it responds with info or does something completely random and replies to something totally unexpected, we'll handle it properly. So good to build resilient chatbots. If the LLM does something completely out there or the user just says a message about a frog rather than a ferret or something else entirely, what we'll do is we'll reprompt them. So we'll just add a message step and we'll say, try another story about your ferret. And we'll connect this to else and then we'll connect it back to this last utterance. So now the last thing for us to do is add the additional cost to ensure a ferret based on their emotion to the price that the user is told. We'll do this again using the set step. So let's do logic, set, and drag it on. And again, we'll say we want to go and set the price. But this time we can't just set it to 50 or 20 or whatever because we wanna include the price that was previously set. So we'll use an expression and we'll say price plus 20. That adds 20 onto this price that was already there. And then we can connect this up. And just like earlier, we can duplicate and repeat. So if it's sad, it adds 50 onto the price. And if it's angry, well, angry ferret is pretty expensive to insure. So we'll add 100. Awesome. That is a great use of variables, but that was a lot. But we did just successfully build a ferret insurance calculator. Finally, let's tell the user the cost of our insurance policy by including the price variable in a message step. So we'll do this by going to talk, message, and we'll say your ferret's insurance will cost, and then we'll use curly brackets, and we'll say price. Perfect. We'll connect this up to here to here, and to here, and there we go. We just did it. Bet you didn't expect to be building a fair insurance price calculator today. If you've been following along with this entire course, this video is part of, you probably have a bunch of stuff on your canvas right now. Let's move the start trigger all the way over here, and then that way we're gonna trigger the right thing when we go and test. So we'll come here, and we'll drag this here. Oh, and uh, if everything's not connected, just, just make sure everything's connected. This is a pretty fancy flow. So finally, we'll test it out. We'll hit run, 
and we will need to retrain our agent. That's because we messed around with entities earlier. We added a ferret name entity. And when it's ready, let's go through the flow. What is the name of my ferret? My ferret is called Daniel. And it's gonna have a think. Oh, cool, it set the price to 100. Tell me a story about my ferret. Well, my ferret loves to run in fields, but sometimes it gets into fights and hurts others. Daniel is a really aggressive ferret. And because it was angry, well, I added $100 onto my price. My agent tells me my ferret's insurance will cost $200. It's an expensive ferret. As you add variables and logic to your agent, you can begin to create more advanced workflows. This lets your agent become more integrated into a customer's journey. Another tool that lets your agent become more powerful is chat history. Click here to learn how to add it to your agent.